Alright, today is May the 14th and this is your due now. Alright, if necessary, we need to go ahead and, and pause the video for about five minutes. Alright, now that the video has been paused, let's go over the answers. Let's take a look at the first one. We have 3a squared times 4a cubed. So we can rearrange this to where it's 3 times 4 and then a squared times a to the third power. If we rearrange, it's going to look like this. 3 times 4 and then a squared times a to the third. And so 3 times 4 will give us 12. a squared times a to the third power will be 12 a to the 2 plus 3 power, which will be a to the fifth. The next question says 3a squared times 4a to the third power raised to the second power. With that said, we have to remember that we have to distribute this to every exponent that's there. Even though this 4 doesn't have an exponent, the understood exponent is 1. So we can do 3a squared and then this one right here, distribute that. That's a 3 right there. And then we'll end up with, for this part, it'll be 4 to the 1 times 2 power, so that'll be 4 squared. a to the 3 times 2 power, which will be a to the 6. 4 squared will give us the 16, and then a to the 6. We can't forget about the 3a squared, so we have to multiply that. So the 16 times the 3 will give us 48. A to the 6 times A to the 2nd, we keep the base and we add the exponents which will give us A to the 8th power. Last but not least, we have A to the 4th times A to the negative 4. They have the same base and all you have to do is add the exponents. 4 plus negative 4 will give us 0, so you'll have A to the 0. What you'll learn about today is that anything with an exponent of 0 it's going to end up being 1. Alright, so let's go forward from here. At this point, you need to pause the video so everybody can pull out their notes. Alright, today we are going to be talking about dividing monomials. Alright, so let's take a look at a couple of um, examples. The first thing I want you to write down is a to the 6th power over a to the 4th. So we're going to take a look at this and maybe I should write it a little bit bigger. Alright, so a to the 6th power over a to the 4th. Alright, if I was to expand these, we would have a times a times a times a times a times a. All of that over. a times a times a times a. If you know anything about division, which I know you do, you could technically cross these out. These will cross out. This will cross with this one. This will cross with this one. And you see what we have left. We have a squared. With that said, if you take a look at that, what relationship and what operation would you need to take a 6 and 4 and get a 2? You see we kind of deleted them off or canceled them so that would be the um, subtraction. So here is the rule. So this is the rule for dividing like base terms. And then we're going to put monomials. Okay. So, what you do is you want to keep the base. But subtract the exponents. So we want to keep the base, but subtract the exponents. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of examples. 
Alright, so example one. We have A to the seventh, B to the eighth, over A to the fifth, B. Alright, so we have two bases that we're dealing with. We have an A base and we have a B base. Alright, dealing with this, we can look at these as one entity. This will become a to the 7 minus 5 power. So I'm going to write it out this way so we can see. And this becomes b to the 8 minus what's the understood exponent here? Hopefully we all know it's 1. Alright, so a to the 7 minus 5 would be a squared. And b to the 8 minus 1 would be b to the 7th power. Alright, so that's not so bad. Alright, let's move on. Let's do example two. All right, example two, we're gonna do t to the eighth and z to the ninth over t to the negative fourth and z. All right, we still have bases. We have a t base and we have a z base. So what we're gonna do is do t to the 8 minus negative 4 power. See, I don't delete the um, minus sign just because it's a negative. And then we have z to the 9 minus 1 power. So this will become t to the 12th, z to the 8th. Alright, let's move on to the third example. Example 3. We're going to do um, A to the 4th, B to the 7th, over A to the 4th, B to the negative 3rd. Alright, so let's take a look at it. Now, if we were to write this out, and this is kind of what I was talking to you guys about earlier, it would be a over A, it'll be four A's on top, and then A, 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 A on the bottom. But you see what I'm saying? Four minus four will be zero. Technically, this is A to the four minus four power. But let's talk about it a little bit so you can understand why it's one. If we cross all of these out, it's not that you'll be left with a zero. You'll be left with a zero power, but you're still left with a one. For example, anything over itself. So five over five is one. This is technically five to the first over five to the first, which becomes five to the one minus one power, which is five to the zero. But five to the zero power is one because we just proved it right here. Anything over itself is one a to the fourth over a to the fourth is like saying something is over itself even though it's to the zero power you have to recognize that when it says to the zero power that means that it's over itself and so let's do the second one we'll have b to the seven minus here we go again with that um, double negative so we end up with and we'll just simplify a to the zero and we'll have b to the tenth now if you have this on your test or quiz, it still won't be considered simplified because you need to recognize that this part right here is a one. So that's really one times b to the 10th, which is just b to the 10th. All right, let's look at another example. I know some of you are wondering like what happens when you end up with negative exponents. All right, so here we go, we have example four. Alright, example four is going to be a to the fourth over a to the seventh. So this is a to the four minus seven power. This is a to the negative three. While this may be correct, what you have to understand is that in mathematics, negative exponents are not considered simplified. So let's just put this on the side as a little sidebar note not considered 
simplified because the exponent is negative. All right, so I don't want you to be confused with this process, but I want to show you how to do it. So when you have a to the negative third power, to unsimplify, you or sorry, to make it simplify, you have to undo this. This doesn't really mean negative three. It really means a inverse of a three. So that minus sign is really technically an inverse. When you think of inverse, you think of like multiplicative inverses or reciprocals and those kind of things. So what we do is to make this unnegative, we do one over a to the third power. Think about this as being a over one, and then you flip it, and then once you do the flipping process, it makes it unnegative. So let's take a look at another example, because you can't leave any negative exponents. If we had three to the negative two powers, to undo this, it'll be one over three squared, which is one over, and we know three squared is nine. So that's one way to do it. Anytime, anytime you end up with negative exponents, we have to do some kind of flipping of sorts. All right, so let's do a couple of more examples with this negative situation, just so we're clear. All right, I'm going to do example four, example five, and then that'll be it. All right, so example four. All right, so we have a b squared over a to the fourth b to the fifth all right let's look at it this will be a to the one minus four power b to the two minus five power and that becomes a to the negative three b to the negative three the issue is both of these are negatives so as stated previously, if they're negative, they got to move. So they're already above. Let's just think about it as a fraction. They're already above. So we're about to bring them down. So they can be non-negative. And as a placeholder, we put a 1 up here. So that's how that's done. All right, last example. All right, let's do... Um, Maybe we need to do one more after this. All right, so example five. All right, let's do a negative two b to the fourth c squared over a negative five b c to the fifth all of this to the second power all right so I want to know what your thoughts are concerning this even though I can't hear you um, let's just pause the video for a couple of seconds just so we can kind of hear what everybody is thinking as to what the first steps would be all right I hope you all were given enough time to think about it um, but what I want, I hope that you all figured out is that this two needed to be distributed to everything, every last exponent. That's the first thing you want to do. So a to the negative two times two power, b to the fourth times two, c to the second times two, a to the negative fifth times two, b to the one times two, and c to the fifth times two. So let's do that. So we'll have a to the negative fourth b to the eighth um, c to the fourth over a to the negative tenth b to the second and c to the tenth now we deal with the basis a to the negative four minus ten power minus negative ten power so that's a to the negative four minus negative ten power b to the eight minus 2 power and c to the 4 minus 10 power alright we're still going we have a 
negative 4 minus negative 10 is going to give us a 6. B to the 6. Sorry for the B's looking like 6's. And C to the negative 6. Alright. So the only thing that needs to move is this C because this C is to the negative 6 power. So once we do it, we'll leave this like this. And it'll be over C to the 6 power. Alright. So that's pretty much it. Um, I want you guys to consider that. Um, let's do one more example together and just be done with everything. Last example. So this will be example number six. Let's go with 20. A squared over um, 40. A B. Let's put a C squared on top. And then let's do a C to the fifth on the bottom. Alright. So we look at this. You have to reduce this like you would regularly. 20 over 40 reduced would just be one half. And then this right here would be A to the second over A. So that's A to the 2 minus 1 power which would be A, which is a positive one. There is no B up top, so B will stay on the bottom. And this will be C to the 2 minus 5 power, which is C to the negative third. You can ask yourself before you do it, where does that C go? Since it's on top, it will go on the bottom. Sorry, since it's a negative 3, it's going to end up going on the bottom. Oh, I forgot about something. What do y'all think happens when you have this? I don't want to do the, let's not make that an A. Let's do a, a to the 8th over B to the negative 4th. What happens with that? Well, the rule is, if it's negative, it has to move. So, the A will obviously come down. But then, what happens to the B? It has to move because it's negative in order to flip and reverse and all that it will actually go on top. So this simplified would be b to the fourth over a to the eighth. So anytime you have a situation where it's like a bunch of negatives all over the place, um, the only thing I recommend is that anything that does not have a negative, you leave it alone. This one is just for my amusement. All right, looking at this, what needs to move? A squared got to move. B to the negative 3 got to move. And C to the negative 3 got to move. Everything else will stay where it is. And I promise this is the last thing I'm doing. So we're going to make this. I'm going to bring that A squared down. I'm going to put it next to the A. I'm going to bring that B to the third power down. Put that next to the B that was already down there. I'm going to bring the C to the third power up, and I'm going to leave R squared where it is. Look at that. That's pretty much what you would do, but if you think about it, this can be simplified because you have a A squared times an A at the bottom. So this is where you're like using all of your tools. So your final answer is going to be C to the third R squared over a to the third, B to the fourth. All right, I hope you learned something out of this. Ms. Penn is going to have a worksheet or assignment to give you. I'm not sure if it's going to be out of the book or a worksheet yet, but she'll have that information. If you have any questions, you can email me at helplessnelson at live.com, but you can also look at my YouTube channel and post a question. Alright, so this is my YouTube channel information, and this is my email. Sorry, I'm writing in the grooves over the wood table, struggling here. Alright, there we go.
Have a good day.